Tanjiro says goodbye to his family and heads down the mountain to sell charcoal. After his father passes away, Tanjiro being the oldest son takes on the responsibility of taking care of his family. The next morning, as he walks back home, his sharp sense of smell picks up the scent of blood. When he reaches his house, he finds that demons have attacked and killed his entire family. The only one still breathing is his little sister, Nezuko. Filled with sadness and desperation, Tanjiro carries Nezuko on his back and quickly runs towards the clinic down the mountain. Nezuko wakes up, revealing sharp teeth and attempting to bite Tanjiro. It turns out that his sister has transformed into a demon. Tanjiro desperately calls out her name. And somehow, his voice awakens something within her. Even in her demon form, Nezuko sheds tears, indicating that she still retains her humanity. At that moment, Tanjiro notices someone attacking Nezuko from behind. He immediately flips over to protect his sister, and his hair gets cut off by a sword. The person who appears is a demon slayer named Giyu. He grabs Nezuko and tells Tanjiro that she is no longer the sister he knew, she has become a demon. Tanjiro kneels on the ground, pleading with Giyu not to kill his sister Nezuko, and promises that he will find a way to turn her back into a human. However, Giyu sternly scolds Tanjiro, saying that the weak do not have the right to choose and that only by becoming strong can he protect the ones he cares about. Even though Giyu understands Tanjiro's pain, he must eliminate Nezuko. Tanjiro wants to protect his sister, but Giyu knocks him unconscious. Suddenly, Nezuko unleashes a strange power and breaks free from Giyu's grip. When Giyu thinks Nezuko is going to devour Tanjiro, she actually stands in front of him, protecting her brother. Giyu, seeing Nezuko's humanity, decides not to kill her and only knocks her unconscious. He puts a piece of bamboo muzzle in her mouth to prevent her from hurting people. He writes a letter recommending Tanjiro to a master named Sakanji, who specializes in training demon slayers, hoping that he can help them. Giyu informs Tanjiro that demons cannot be exposed to sunlight before leaving. Tanjiro buries his family members and takes one last look at the small wooden house he used to live in. Then he and his sister start their journey to find Sakanji. He buys some bamboo and straw from a farmer, and makes a special basket to protect his sister from the sunlight. Nezuko can change her size, and she becomes a small little creature, and goes inside the basket. As it gets darker, Tanjiro smells a strong scent of blood. He rushes to a farmer's house and finds a hungry demon eating people. When Nezuko sees the dead bodies, she can't help but drool. The demon suddenly attacks Tanjiro, but he manages to slash its throat. However, the demon quickly heals its wound. The demon is about to strangle Tanjiro when Nezuko, who was tempted by food, suddenly snaps out of it and rushes over. She kicks the demon's head away with a strong kick. The demon's head falls to the ground, but its headless body can still move. Nezuko fights against the demon's body while Tanjiro takes care of the demon's head. The demon's head grows two hands and comes straight at Tanjiro. He blocks it with his axe. Tanjiro fiercely headbutts the demon's head and then nails it to a tree with his axe. He immediately runs to help his sister fight the rest of the demon's body. He forcefully knocks the demon off the cliff, almost falling down with the demon's body. But at the last moment, Nezuko grabs his collar and saves him. He returns to deal with the demon's head. Tanjiro is afraid that the demon might attack others, so he bravely prepares to stab the demon's head with a knife, despite his fear. Suddenly, a person wearing a mask appears. He tells Tanjiro that this kind of small knife cannot kill demons. He hints to Tanjiro to smash the demon's head with a stone, which would kill the demon. But Tanjiro hesitates and can't bring himself to do it. The masked man senses that Tanjiro still feels sympathy for the demon, and he thinks Tanjiro is too weak to fight. Later, as the sun rises, the demon turns into ashes. Tanjiro gets startled and quickly remembers that his sister shouldn't see sunlight. Luckily, clever Nezuko has already hidden inside a house. The masked person buries the people who were killed by the demon. He tells Tanjiro that he is Sakanji, who Tanjiro is looking for. He asks Tanjiro what he would do if his sister ate a person. Tanjiro freezes for a moment, and then gets slapped by Sakanji. Sakanji tells Tanjiro that he is too weak. If Nezuko eats a person, Tanjiro must immediately kill his sister. He must be prepared for such a situation, especially if Nezuko harms innocent people. Sakanji takes them back home. Despite his old age, Sakanji walks swiftly. Tanjiro is almost out of breath but refuses to stop, closely following Sakanji. He wants to find the person responsible for killing his family and discover a way to turn his sister back into a human. Sakanji is his only hope for help. Before the sun sets, a tired Tanjiro finally arrives at Sakanji's house. 
Sakanji wants Tanjiro to undergo a test before he agrees to take Tanjiro as his student. After settling the sleeping Nizuko, Sakanji takes Tanjiro up a mountain. Sakanji tells Tanjiro to return from the mountain by sunrise to become his student. Tanjiro thinks it's easy but finds lots of hidden traps. He gets hurt and dizzy, but keeps going. Using his super sense of smell, he spots traps and avoids them. As dawn breaks, Tanjiro, though hurt, finishes the test. Sakanji, seeing his resolve, agrees to teach him. Sakanji introduces the Demon Slayer Corps. It's an organization with hundreds of members dedicated to fighting and protecting humans from demons. The Demon Slayer Corps has existed since ancient times. However, the government doesn't recognize it. This means that demon slayers have to keep their work a secret. Most people don't know that demons even exist. Some demons are not only incredibly strong but also possess special abilities. Humans have never been a match for demons until the legendary swordsman Yorichi Tsujikuni appeared. He invented sun breathing, a powerful breathing technique that was very strong and worked really well against demons. Based on sun breathing, his students created many other breathing techniques like water breathing, moon breathing, etc. This greatly increased the strength of the Demon Slayer core, and it finally had the ability to stand up against demons. Sakanji says that to become a member of the Demon Slayer core, Tanjiro has to go through the final selection. It's a special test that only certain people can pass. Under Sakanji's guidance, Tanjiro starts his training to become a Demon Slayer. Sakanji teaches Tanjiro all 10 forms of water breathing. It helps oxygen go into Tanjiro's cells and makes him stronger in battles. Sakanji instructs Tanjiro to become one with water and then kicks him into a waterfall. During Tanjiro's training days, Nezuko has been sleeping all along. He doesn't know when she will wake up, so he writes a diary for her every day. After a year, Sakanji tells Tanjiro that he has nothing more to teach him. He takes Tanjiro to a giant rock and says that if Tanjiro can slice it, he will let him join the Demon Slayer Corps' final selection. Tanjiro thinks it's impossible but tries anyway. However, he gets hit by the rock and shakes all over. He keeps training and trying. After six months, Tanjiro's hands are blistered, but he still can't slice the rock. He gets so frustrated that he even considers smashing it with his head. Suddenly, a swordsman named Sabito, wearing a fox mask, jumps out of nowhere to challenge Tanjiro. Sabito easily knocks Tanjiro unconscious. A girl named Makomo stays to take care of him. Makomo and Sabito never mention where they come from, but reveal that they were orphans raised by Sakanji. They inform Tanjiro that he hasn't truly learned Sakanji's water breathing technique. Tanjiro had only memorized the knowledge but didn't understand how to apply it. Every day, Makomo and Sabito guide Tanjiro in his battles and breathing techniques. Half a year has passed. Tanjiro challenges Sabito once again. Tanjiro has developed a special skill. He can use his sense of smell to find the best spot to attack his enemy. It's called an opening thread. By cutting through this thread with his sword, Tanjiro can effortlessly defeat his opponent. As a result, Tanjiro defeats Sabito and cuts off his mask. Sabito and Makomo encourage Tanjiro to succeed in the final selection before disappearing. When the mist clears, Tanjiro realizes that he has sliced the giant rock in half. Sakanji is astonished by Tanjiro's accomplishment and reluctantly agrees to let him participate in the final selection. Sakanji tells Tanjiro that many of his previous students who joined the final selection had died and hopes he can come back alive. It turns out that both Sabito and Makomo had died in a past final selection, and what Tanjiro had seen was only their spirits guiding him. Before Tanjiro sets off, Sakanji provides him with a delicious meal. He explains that demons grow stronger by consuming humans and can regenerate their bodies when injured. The only way to kill them is by using sunlight or a special sword called Nikarin sword to cut off their heads. Then, Sakanji gives Tanjiro a Nikarin sword and a fox mask that symbolizes good luck. Tanjiro quickly arrives at the location for the final selection. It's a special mountain where the demon slayers keep the captured demons. The test is very tough. The swordsmen need to survive for seven days in this mountain where countless demons are imprisoned. On the first night, Tanjiro meets two demons. At first, he feels nervous and scared but he quickly calms down and finds the opening threads of the demons. Then, using Sakanji's teachings of water breathing fourth form, striking tide, he kills them. Suddenly, Tanjiro detects a terrible smell in the air. He notices a swordsman screaming and running desperately through the forest. Tanjiro glances back and quickly hides behind a tree, feeling frightened. A hand demon with many arms is moving through the mountain, 
the hand demon grabs one of the swordsmen it had killed and devours him. Its body expands and its arms stretch out, capturing the fleeing swordsman, preparing to devour him. Despite his inner fear, Tanjiro summons his courage. He bravely uses the water breathing, second form, water wheel technique to sever the hand demon's arm and save the swordsman. When the hand demon sees Tanjiro's fox mask, it becomes agitated. It turns out that 47 years ago, it was captured by Sakanji and imprisoned on this mountain. Over the years, it has consumed 50 swordsmen. Among them, 13 were Sakanji's students, including Sabito and Makomo. The hand demon mocks the masks given by Sakanji to his students as symbols of luck. He laughs and says that these masks are actually unlucky because every student who wore one of them ended up being eaten by him. Hearing this, Tanjiro becomes furious and cuts off the demon's arms relentlessly. However, the demons have too many arms, and soon he gets punched away by them. His mask shatters into pieces. The demon taunts, wondering what expression Sakanji would have if he found out Tanjiro didn't survive. Then, it extends an arm towards the unconscious Tanjiro, preparing to grab and devour him. Fortunately, Tanjiro regains consciousness just in time and evades the attack. The demon becomes even more excited and controls numerous large hands to attack Tanjiro. Tanjiro cuts off one, but another follows closely. Cutting off the demon's arms won't kill it. Tanjiro must cut off the demon's head to defeat it. However, the demon's neck is heavily guarded by its countless arms, making it extremely difficult to cut off its head. Tanjiro charges towards the demon. His sharp sense of smell allows him to detect a scent coming from the underground. Just as he jumps up, four arms of the demon emerge from the ground. Surprised that Tanjiro evaded its ambush, the demon plans to attack while Tanjiro is unable to move in midair. The demon merges its arms into one large hand and reaches towards Tanjiro's face. But Tanjiro is no ordinary person. He headbutts the large hand, forcefully deflecting it. Then, Tanjiro steps on the demon's arm, getting closer to its head. He uses water breathing first form, water surface slash to slash the opening thread of the demon, and successfully cuts off its head. Before the demon dies, he remembers his past. After becoming a demon, he couldn't control himself and ate his beloved brother. Tanjiro senses the sadness and unexpectedly holds the demon's hand. The demon starts shedding tears, thinking of his brother. In his last dream, he didn't become a demon but held his brother's hand and returned home together. In the mist, Sabito and the other twelve students of Sakanji express their gratitude to Tanjiro. Even though they've passed away, their spirits will forever accompany their master. After seven days, the test finally ends, and out of the dozens of swordsmen, only four have survived. They successfully join the demon slayer corps. They each receive uniforms and kasugai crows that give them missions. A blonde boy is given a sparrow instead of a crow. They can select the ore for their own Nikarin swords and will receive their swords at a later date. Tanjiro uses his sense of smell to choose his ore. Elsewhere, the leader of the Demon Slayer Corps is informed by a Kasugai crow that five people have survived the final selection. However, one person seems impatient and leaves early after completing the selection. So who's the fifth guy? We will meet him later. After a long journey, Tanjiro returns to Sakanji's house. Nezuko, who had been asleep for two years, finally awakens and the siblings embrace tightly. Sakanji, seeing his students safely return, also embraces them with deep emotion. Tanjiro tells Sakanji about the hand demon who can change the shape of his arms. Sakanji explains that when certain demons eat enough people and become strong, they gain special powers called blood demon arts. These powers are different for each demon. So in the future, Tanjiro might come across strong demons with different abilities. Tanjiro asks if his sister Nezuko's long sleep is related to blood demon arts, but Sakanji doesn't think so. He believes that Nezuko sleeps for a long time to heal herself without needing to eat people like other demons. After several days, Tanjiro receives his newly forged Nikarin sword. The person who made the sword, Haganazuka, calls Tanjiro the child of brightness because of his fire-like hair and eyes. He believes that Tanjiro's family has a connection with fire, considering it fortunate and worthy of celebration. The Nikarin sword can change colors depending on its owner. Haganazuka guesses that it might turn red like fire for Tanjiro, but when Tanjiro holds it, it turns black instead. He thinks this is a bad sign, but Sakanji comforts him by saying that black is not unusual for the color of a sword. Tanjiro's Kasugai crow brings news that in a town to the northwest, young girls have been mysteriously disappearing every night. Tanjiro's mission as a demon slayer is to find and defeat the demon lurking there. 
Before he sets off, Sakanji tells Tanjiro that there's only one demon whose blood can turn someone into a demon. He's the progenitor. His name is Muzan, and he became a demon over a thousand years ago. He must be the one who killed Tanjiro's family and turned his sister into a demon. Maybe only Muzan knows how to turn her back into a human again. Tanjiro puts on his demon slayer uniform and carries a small box made by Sakanji specifically for Nezuko. They arrive at a small town where girls frequently go missing. They encounter a distraught man named Kazumi who is searching for his missing fiancé. Guided by Kazumi, Tanjiro arrives at the spot where his fiancé disappeared. Tanjiro has a keen sense of smell and immediately gets down on the ground to sniff around. He detects the scent of a demon and follows the trail. At night, a girl and her mother bid each other goodnight in their house. Just as the girl enters her room and prepares to sleep, a demon hand emerges from under her bed, covering her mouth and dragging her into a dark swamp. Tanjiro immediately detects the scent and swiftly chases after them, reaching the outskirts of the house. He can't see the demon, but he can smell the presence of both the demon and the human girl. Without hesitation, Tanjiro unsheathes his sword and stabs the ground where the scent is strongest. A swamp emerges, and within it, Tanjiro spots the girl's figure. He quickly retrieves her from the demon's grasp. The demon emerges from the swamp and makes an angry grinding sound with its teeth. Then he dives back into the swamp to hide. Tanjiro hands over the girl to Sakanji who has arrived. He stands in front of them, protecting them. Suddenly, a strong smell of decay comes from underground and Tanjiro draws his sword ready to attack but then realizes that the demon has split into three clones. It seems this demon is very powerful and is capable of blood demon art. Its special power allows it to turn objects into swamp space so it can move around freely within it. It can also divide itself into three clones. Tanjiro jumps up using water breathing, eight form, waterfall basin technique to attack all three clones at once but unfortunately he misses their weak points, only cutting their arms off. Kazumi asks the demon to return his fiancé back to him. The demon takes out a jewelry box and asks him which one it is, as all these jewels belong to the girl he devoured. Kazumi sees his fiancé's hairband and becomes overwhelmed with sadness. At that moment, three clones launch attacks on Tanjiro from different angles. Just as a demon is about to ambush Tanjiro from behind, Nezuko, who has awakened, kicks the attacking demon away. It turns out that earlier, at Sakanji's house, while Nezuko was asleep, Sakanji hypnotized her to protect humans and see demons as enemies. So Nezuko and Tanjiro team up to battle the three demon clones. Nezuko is incredibly strong and fast. One of the clones emerges from the swamp and attacks Nezuko. Tanjiro believes she can handle it, so he jumps into the swamp to confront the other two clones. Inside the swamp, Tanjiro sees the clothes of the girls who were eaten by the demon, and it fills him with anger. Two clones surround Tanjiro from both sides. Tanjiro uses water breathing, sixth form, whirlpool. A strong whirlwind smashes the two clones. Meanwhile, Nezuko is in a tough fight with the last clone on the ground. The clone scratches Nezuko's forehead with sharp claws and then aims for her eyes. Luckily, Tanjiro comes out of the swamp just in time and cuts off the clone's arm. The demon is trapped in a corner. Tanjiro asks the demon how many girls he has hurt. The demon tries to make excuses, saying that their flesh tastes bad after they get older, so it's better to eat them early. Humans should be thankful. A furious Tanjiro shuts him up with one strike. He doesn't kill the demon because he wants to find out more about Muzan. Hearing Muzan's name, the demon becomes scared and refuses to say anything about him. Tanjiro then eliminates him. Nezuko has fallen asleep to heal the wound. Tanjiro puts her in a box and tells Kazumi, who has lost his loved one, not to give up and to keep living, no matter what he has lost. Kazumi angrily grabs Tanjiro's collar, questioning what a child can understand. But when he sees the sad eyes of Tanjiro, Kazumi falls silent. How could Tanjiro not understand? He has only Nezuko left. He stands up and hands Kazumi the jewelry box found in the swamp, including the belongings of Kazumi's fiancé. Kazumi can't help but cry. Tanjiro bids him farewell. His battered hands bear the scars of countless hardships. In this moment, Kazumi understands that Tanjiro, just like himself, has lost someone important. Tanjiro, witnessing the pain inflicted by demons on humans, grows even more hateful toward Muzan, the creator of demons. His Kasugai Crow gives him a new mission to go to Asakusa in Tokyo because there might be demons there. When Tanjiro gets to Asakusa, he's surprised by how busy it is compared to his quiet mountain home. He takes a break to eat some noodles, but then, he smells a familiar scent. 
Tanjiro realizes it's the same smell as the demon who killed his family. Following the smell, Tanjiro finds a man with pale skin and red eyes. It's Muzan. But before he can do anything, he sees Muzan has a little girl with him. Muzan, hiding as a human, even has a wife and child. Tanjiro is so shocked he freezes. Not wanting his family to know he's a demon, Muzan sneakily scratches a man passing by, turning him into a demon. The new demon scares everyone by biting his own wife. Tanjiro stops the new demon from hurting people. Taking advantage of the chaos, Muzan escapes with his family. Tanjiro wishes he could chase Muzan, but he has to keep people safe. The police show up. Most people including the police have never encountered demons before, and they think Tanjiro is the troublemaker, so they try to arrest him. At that moment, a demon named Tamayo cuts her own arm and uses her blood demon art to create a beautiful flower garden, blocking the view of the surrounding crowd. Tamayo approaches Tanjiro with a boy named Yushiro. She says that Tanjiro is a kind person. Even though the transformed man has become a demon, Tanjiro still wants to save him. She reaches out to help save the transformed person. Tanjiro tries to say she's a demon, but she admits it herself. She reveals that she's also a doctor and wants to defeat Muzan, just like him. Meanwhile, Muzan summons two demons to kill Tanjiro. After Muzan's subordinates leave, Muzan starts sweating nervously. He has noticed Tanjiro's Hanafuda earrings. These special earrings remind him of a mysterious swordsman from long ago who almost defeated him. That swordsman wore the same earrings. Could that mysterious swordsman be Tanjiro's father or someone else? We will find out later. On the other side, Tanjiro arrives at Tamayo's house with his sister. It is a special space that requires passing through a dead-end alley. Tamayo has locked up the man who was previously turned into a demon and treated his injured wife. Tamayo reveals that after countless experiments on herself, she no longer needs to eat humans and can survive by purchasing and drinking a small amount of human blood. She has also freed herself from Muzan's curse. Muzan's curse is that any demon who dares to speak Muzan's name will face a terrible fate. Tamayo explains that Yashiro is a demon she created. Yashiro was seriously ill at the time, and Tamayo turned him into a demon to save his life. Tanjiro is shocked to learn that Tamayo can create demons just like Muzan. Tamayo explains that in over 200 years, she has only succeeded in creating Yashiro as a demon, so basically only Muzan can create demons. Tanjiro quickly asks if there is a way to turn his sister back into a human. Tamayo currently does not have a solution for that, but she says she will research different demon blood in order to find a way to turn demons back into humans. She asks for Tanjiro's help with two things. First, she requests permission to study Nezuko's blood. Nezuko has been able to survive without eating human flesh for the past two years, making her blood valuable for research. Second, Tamayo asks Tanjiro to collect the blood of demons with a high concentration of Muzan's blood for her research. The blood of demons with a higher concentration of Muzan's blood is more valuable for her studies. However, it also means that these demons are stronger, making it harder to obtain their blood. Tanjiro agrees to Tamayo's request, with the goal of saving humanity and Nezuko. Meanwhile, Muzan's two subordinates track them down based on footprints and scent, launching a sudden attack. Some Tamari balls break through the house. They smash through everything in its path, causing widespread destruction and completely demolishing the entire house. The Tamari demon and arrow demon enter the scene. One of the balls hurls towards Tamayo, but Yashiro bravely steps in to protect her. However, to everyone's surprise, the ball skillfully dodges Yashiro as if it had eyes swiftly changes direction, and smashes into Yashiro's head. Luckily, he's a demon so his head quickly regenerates. The Temari demon throws another ball, and Tanjiro uses water breathing, seventh form, drop ripple thrust, curve, attempting to control the ball but it doesn't work as the ball changes its path on its own. The Temari demon gets excited and removes its clothes, growing four additional arms. It grips six Temari balls and launches them towards Tanjiro. The demon claims to be a member of the Twelve Kazuki. Tamayo explains that the Twelve Kazuki are powerful demons who directly serve Muzan. Every member of the Twelve Kazuki has been given a lot of Muzan's blood. This blood makes them stronger than any other demon. The balls fly around the room, causing Tanjiro a headache with their unpredictable movements. Yushiro gives Tanjiro a piece of talisman paper and lends his demon vision to Tanjiro. Tanjiro finally realizes that there are red arrows controlling the ball's trajectory. At that moment, he notices there's an arrow demon hiding in a tree outside, manipulating the ball's path. Tanjiro instructs Nezuko to confront the arrow demon in the tree while he deals with the Tamari demon. 
Nezuko leaps over a few trees and disrupts the arrow demon controlling the arrows. The balls around Tanjiro instantly stop, and he uses water breathing, third form, flowing dance to sever all of the Temari demon's arms. The arrow demon is a clean freak, he gets annoyed by the dust being raised, so he uses his arrows to push Nezuko away from him. Tanjiro catches her and falls to the ground. The Temari demon quickly regenerates its arms. Yushiro tells Tanjiro to confront the arrow demon while he and Nezuko handle the Temari demon. The siblings act separately. Nezuko skillfully evades all the Temari balls thrown by the Temari demon, while Yushiro, using his invisibility powers, approaches and delivers a series of punches, knocking the demon to the ground. The Temari demon retaliates by releasing more balls, and Nezuko kicks one of them. The ball's impact is so powerful that it breaks her leg. The demon takes advantage of this and kicks her away. Tamayo administers medication to aid her recovery. In Nezuko's eyes, Tamayo resembles her gentle mother. Meanwhile, Tanjiro has a tough fight with the arrow demon who, despite seeming weak, is harder to beat than the Tamari demon. The demon shoots arrows that can control where things move. When Tanjiro nearly hits the demon, he's swept up by the arrows instead. They rush him around the yard, up in the sky, and drop him fast. If he hit the ground, he'd be dead. Just in time, Tanjiro uses the eight-form waterfall basin to lessen the impact and lands safely. The arrow demon fires more arrows. Tanjiro tries to cut them, but the arrows change the direction of anything they touch. The arrows make Tanjiro hit a wall and lose his sword. They twist around his arm, ready to break it. But Tanjiro smartly spins with them, canceling their force. Finally, he comes up with a plan to deal with the arrow demon. He wraps the arrows with the sixth form and uses the third form to get closer to the arrow demon. Then, Tanjiro does a cool move called Twisting Whirlpool Flowing Water where he spins the arrows around and confuses the demon. When Tanjiro is close enough to the demon, he wields his blade, performing the water wheel technique, and uses the arrows to behead the demon. Before dying, the arrow demon fills Tanjiro with arrows. Tanjiro is carried away by the arrows in all directions. He has to keep swinging his sword to cancel their force, or he'd be torn up. His arms are about to break due to the extensive use of sword techniques. Finally, the arrow demon turns to ashes and disappears. Tanjiro, exhausted, collapses to the ground. His ribs and legs are broken, and his hands tremble, unable to hold the sword. However, there is still one demon left to deal with. He clenches the sword with his teeth and crawls towards his sister with all his strength. The Temari demon smacks the ball, stirring up the dust on the ground, which blocks Yoshiro's view. The ball flies towards Yoshiro's head through the smoke, but Nezuko swiftly kicks it back. Seeing its balls being kicked back, the Temari demon becomes infuriated. Nezuko looks at Yoshiro, who reminds her of her younger brother, and she can't help but pat his head. The demon keeps shooting balls like a furious soccer player, but Nezuko's always returning them like a World Cup champion. Yushiro wonders about Nezuko's sudden power. Tamayo thinks it's Nezuko's drive to protect her family that makes her so strong. Tamayo knows that even though Nezuko has become stronger, she still struggles to defeat the Tamari demon. So Tamayo steps forward and asks the Tamari demon if it really understands Muzan. As soon as it hears Muzan's name, the demon panics. Tamayo says that Muzan is actually a coward. He never allows demons to gather together, deliberately causing them to fight against each other so they won't unite and rebel. Tamayo discreetly scratches her arm, releasing a fragrance that confuses the Tamari demon. The Tamari demon argues with Tamayo, claiming that Muzan is the most powerful. But as the demon realizes it has spoken Muzan's name, it hastily covers its mouth while running away and begging for Muzan's forgiveness. In an instant, several giant hands emerge from the demon's abdomen, crushing its head. The demon's body is destroyed by the remaining Muzan cells within. This is the Muzan's curse imposed by Muzan on all demons. Any demon who speaks his name meets such a fate. Tamayo examines the eye of the Tamari demon and says that it is not a member of the 12 Kazuki. She explains that the 12 Kazuki members have unique numbers engraved into their eyes, distinguishing them from other demons. She comments that these two demons are still too weak, which surprises Tanjiro. Tamayo takes samples of their blood for research. As the sun rises, the demons have retreated to the basement of the house. Tanjiro goes downstairs to check on them and discovers that Nezuko is fully healed. Nezuko hugs him. But then, to everyone's surprise, she also turns and embraces Tamayo tightly. Tanjiro says that Nezuko probably sees them as humans. For Nezuko, all humans are family. Tamayo becomes emotional, as her lifelong dream is to become human again. 
and Nezuko thinks of her as a human. Tamayo asks if Tanjiro is willing to entrust his sister to them, but Nezuko holds on to her brother's hand, and they decide not to be separated. The next day, the Kasugai crow directs them to head southeast, and along the way, they encounter Zenitsu, a demon slayer who passed the final selection with Tanjiro. Unlike Tanjiro's Kasugai crow, Zenitsu's messenger is a sparrow. The sparrow informs Tanjiro that Zenitsu is begging a girl who already has a fiancé to marry him. So Tanjiro helps the girl escape, which makes Zenitsu very angry. Zenitsu is a timid person who was previously deceived by a woman and left with no money and debts to repay. A trainer from the Demon Slayer Corps helped him settle his debts and trained him to become a Demon Slayer. However, Zenitsu is extremely afraid of demons, so he asks Tanjiro to protect him. Together, they come across a pair of siblings whose older brother has been captured by a demon. To save their brother, they sneak into a mysterious old house, said to be the home of demons. When they enter the house, strange drum sounds start to play, and the house's space changes, spreading them out. Tanjiro is with the girl, and Zenitsu is with the boy. A demon with drums all over him appears at the door. Tanjiro can tell from its smell that it's the most powerful demon in the house. He tells the girl to hide and prepares to fight the drum demon. But the drum demon doesn't seem to notice Tanjiro. He's talking to himself, complaining about people coming into his house, letting a boy with rare blood escape. As Tanjiro tries to attack, the demon taps a drum on its body. Suddenly, the room flips over onto its side. His attack misses because the room is sideways now. It turns out this demon has blood demon art, and his special power is in his drum. Suddenly, a guy in a boar mask barges in, charging at the drum demon with his Nikarin swords. The demon hits his drum again, making the room spin. The boar guy tries to stay standing by jumping on the little girl. Annoyed, Tanjiro throws him off, which surprisingly excites the boar guy. He's thrilled that a human dared to throw him. This chaos annoys the drum demon. He bangs the drum in the middle of his body, creating giant claw marks that slice the floor. The drum demon keeps hitting his drum, and the room keeps spinning. New claw marks appear. Tanjiro starts to understand the functions of the different drums on the drum demon's body. Some drums make the room spin, others send out attacks. Suddenly, the drum demon and the boar head disappear. Tanjiro realizes someone else is hitting a drum. He takes the little girl around the house and finds her lost older brother who was kidnapped by the demon. It was him who was hitting the drum. That's why the house changed and the drum monster and boar head disappeared. Meanwhile, Zenitsu and the boy meet a tongue demon who threatens to suck out their brains. This scares Zenitsu so much that he faints. The tongue demon lunges towards them, but Zenitsu's sword cuts off the demon's tongue. With his eyes closed, Zenitsu gets up, seeming like a completely different person. He uses a special move called Thunder Breathing, First Form, Thunder Clap and Flash. He pulls out his golden Nikarin sword, and a flash of electricity zips through the demon's neck in an instant. The demon is cut into two pieces. The demon's head rolls down to Zenitsu's feet. He snaps awake, thinking that it was the boy who had defeated the demon. Immediately, he clings to the boy's leg and starts to cry loudly. The little boy who witnessed everything is stunned. On the other hand, the boar head encounters a one-horned demon. Utilizing his self-taught technique, beast breathing, he swiftly severs the demon's arms and beheads it with dual swords. Tanjiro bandages the wounds of the girl's brother and asks him what happened. The boy explains that when he got here, the tongue demon, the one-horned demon, and the drum demon were fighting over who would eat him. During the fight, a drum fell off the drum demon's back. He picked it up and hit it, causing the room to change. He hid and managed to avoid being eaten. He tells Tanjiro that the demons kept referring to him as Merchi Blood. Tanjiro's Kasugai Crow explains that Merchi Blood refers to a person with rare blood. Eating one person with Merchi Blood can give a demon a lot of energy, which is why demons like to eat people with Merchi Blood. On the other side, the drum demon keeps talking about his desire to consume someone with Merchi Blood, claiming it would be equivalent to devouring a hundred people. By doing so, he believes he can reclaim his position in the Twelve Kazuki. In the past, he was a member of the Twelve Kazuki, with number engraved into his eye, denoting his former rank, Lower Six. But because he couldn't consume vast amounts of humans, Muzan considered him too weak and banished him from the Twelve Kazuki, stripping him of his numbered eye. The drum demon wants to eat humans to grow stronger and rejoin the Twelve Kazuki. Tanjiro senses the drum demon approaching and quickly tells the siblings to hit the drum and move to another room to hide. Tanjiro grips his sword and charges towards the drum demon. The demon continuously beats his drum, causing the room to spin and releasing claw attacks. 
Tanjiro has figured out what each different drum does, but it's not much help because the demon hits the drum so fast, Tanjiro can't react in time. Furthermore, his injuries from his last mission haven't healed, and every move he makes agitates his wounds, causing him severe pain. Despite repeatedly getting knocked down, he stands up again and again, vowing never to give up. Seeing Tanjiro's determination, the drum demon recalls his past. He used to be a writer, but his teacher told him his writing was like trash. His teacher told him to quit writing and just play his drum at home, adding insult to injury by stating that even his drumming wasn't impressive. Before leaving, his teacher even stepped on the manuscript he wrote. Enraged, he revealed his true demon form and killed his teacher. Recalling these painful memories, the furious demon begins to increase his drumming speed. His claw attack increases from 3 to 5 slashes, destroying a bookshelf and scattering the manuscripts all over the floor. Tanjiro keeps flipping in the air to dodge the attacks. When he lands, he purposely avoids stepping on the manuscripts, unlike the demon's teacher. This surprises the drum demon. Avoiding the manuscripts has helped Tanjiro figure out how to move without hurting his injury. He starts taking shallow breaths to keep his strength up as the room spins. When the claws come, he can smell the scent of paper. Using this clue, he avoids all of the claw attacks and uses water breathing ninth form, splashing water flow, turbulent. As he gets closer to the demon, he spots the opening thread. Swiftly, he swings his sword and the demon's head falls to the ground. Tanjiro then kneels on the ground, exhausted and in pain from using all his strength. The demon asks Tanjiro if his blood demon art is powerful. Tanjiro acknowledges his drum technique and timely draws his blood. Suddenly, Tamayo's cat appears to collect the blood sample and then disappears. In his final moments, the demon's eyes fill with tears. His drumming skills were acknowledged by Tanjiro, who also didn't trample on his manuscripts like his teacher did, giving him peace as he turns to ash. Tanjiro, with two children, exits the house and finds their younger brother. He sees the boar head beating up Zenitsu and asks what happened. It turns out the boar head found out there's a demon in Tanjiro's box and wanted to kill it. But Zenitsu defended the box as Tanjiro had previously mentioned it contained something very important to him. Tanjiro is touched. Angrily, he punches the boar head for hitting Zenitsu, breaking his ribs. Rather than backing down, the boar head is thrilled and ready to fight more. The boar head moves fast, soon having Tanjiro under his foot and bragging about his strength. Tanjiro fights back, headbutting the guy so hard his mask falls off, showing a pretty face underneath. The boar guy introduces himself as Inosuke, but he faints from his injuries before he can finish. Tanjiro seems fine. When Inosuke wakes up, he's ready to fight again. It turns out he's the fifth guy who passed the final selection. But because he's impatient, he left early. Tanjiro's Kasugai Crow brings a message, ordering everyone to descend the mountain. When saying goodbye to the three children, to protect the boy with Merchi blood, the crow gives him a wisteria bag to ward off demons, as demons fear wisteria. The three demon slayers follow the Kasugai crow to the house of the Wisteria family and are taken care of by an old woman. The Wisteria family, who were once saved by demon slayers, have always been helping the demon slayer corps for free. Under the old woman's caring treatment, the three recover their strength. Inosuke shares his past of growing up in the mountains without parents and how he joined the demon slayer corps after defeating a member, who informed him about the existence of demons and demon slayers. He decided to join because he enjoys competing with other creatures in strength. Nezuko also recovers and wakes up. Zenitsu is immediately smitten by her adorable appearance. Soon after, the Kasugai Crow brings a new mission, sending the three to Spider Mountain. A lot of Demon Slayer Corps members have mysteriously gone missing there. As they reach the foot of the mountain, they meet a member of the Corps who is running away in panic. But before he can ask them for help, he is pulled back into the mountain by some spider threads. This scares Zenitsu so much that he can't go on. But Tanjiro and Inosuke decide to go into the mountain. There, they meet another Demon Slayer Corps member named Murata. When Murata asks about their rank, Tanjiro says they are of Mizunoto rank, the lowest in the core. The core has 11 ranks, with Ashira being the highest. Hearing this, Murata is disappointed. He says only slayers of Hashira rank can fight the demon in the mountain. He tells them how he and his team entered the mountain but were controlled by the spider threads and started to fight each other. He was the only one who managed to escape. Meanwhile, the leader of the Demon Slayer Corps hears about Spider Mountain and guesses that a member of the 12 Kazuki must be there. So he sends two Hashira rank Demon Slayers, Giyu and Shinobu, to help. While all this is happening, Zenitsu is sitting alone, feeling helpless. 
His sparrow encourages him to stop sighing and go help his friends. This reminds Zenitsu of the cute Nezuko. Wanting to protect her, he musters up the courage and charges into Spider Mountain. Meanwhile, Tanjiro and Inosuke are being attacked by other demon slayers who are being controlled by spider threads. Inosuke wants to slash them, but Tanjiro doesn't want to hurt their comrades. So they start cutting the threads to free the controlled slayers. However, these threads reattach themselves shortly after being cut. The only way to resolve this crisis is to find and defeat the demon who is manipulating these spider threads. Suddenly, a demon named Rui, who looks like a pale child, appears. He tells Tanjiro not to disturb his family's peaceful life. Confused, Tanjiro asks him what he means by family. The demon just says that his mother will kill them quickly. Inosuke attacks Rui, but Rui is standing high in the air on spider threads, so Inosuke can't reach him. After taunting them, Rui turns and leaves. Tanjiro senses that Rui isn't the one controlling the threads, so he asks Inosuke to help find the demon who is. Inosuke uses Beast Breathing, 7th form, Spatial Awareness, and successfully locates the female demon controlling the spider threads on the demon slayers. Murata steps up to hold off all the controlled swordsmen, while Tanjiro and Inosuke set off to find the female demon. On their way, they run into more controlled slayers. Meanwhile, the female demon is excited, saying that the closer they get, the thicker and stronger the threads will be, making the puppet slayers more powerful. Then Rui appears and asks her to kill the demon slayers quickly, or else he'll tell father. Terrified, she promises to kill them quickly and begs him not to tell father. Once Rui leaves, she starts shaking with fear, revealing a very strained spider family relationship. Tanjiro finds a way to stop the swordsmen from attacking without hurting them he decides to throw them into the trees. This way, the swordsmen can't attack them anymore. Spider Mother thinks these swordsmen are useless so she uses her spider threads to twist and break their necks. This triggers a profound rage within Tanjiro. Even the usually fearless Inosuke finds himself shaken by Tanjiro's anger. Spider Mother sends her strongest puppet to block their path. Its arms have been transformed into sharp blades that create a terrifying crack in the ground with a single hit. They decide to launch a combined attack. Inosuke leaps up from Tanjiro's box cutting off its arms. Meanwhile, Tanjiro slices through its legs. Midair, Inosuke's double sword split the puppet's body in half. Spider Mother watches in horror as her strongest puppet is destroyed. Inosuke tosses Tanjiro at Spider Mother. As she sees Tanjiro descending from above, she thinks maybe death will finally free her. So, she quietly waits for death. Sensing her surrender, Tanjiro uses a gentle move, fifth form, bless rain after the drought giving her a painless death. She remembers her past, how she was always bullied in her spider family. There are five members in the spider family, but no one ever respected her. She finds death a relief. Before disappearing, she warns Tanjiro that there's a 12 Kazuki member on this mountain. On the other hand, Zenitsu encounters a monster with a human head and spider body. He's the older brother of the spider family. As Zenitsu runs scared, he discovers humans caught by spider brother, about to turn into human-headed spiders. Spider Brother reveals he secretly poisoned Zenitsu with a spider bite that'll turn him into a human-headed spider within 30 minutes. Terrified, Zenitsu runs off, climbs a tree, and starts crying. This reminds him of the time he was hiding in a tree from his trainer. Then, a bolt of lightning struck and although he survived, his hair turned blonde. He's always hated his cowardly self and a fellow student thinks he's useless, wishing him gone. Snapping back from the memory, Zenitsu notices a large clump of his hair has fallen out. The poison is taking effect and he's about to turn into a bald spider. Terrified, Zenitsu faints and it seems he turns into a different person, landing safely using his thunder breathing, first form, thunderclap and flash. Spider brother attacks with poisonous spit and sends spiders after him. However, Zenitsu avoids all dangers using first form. Spider Brother mocks Zenitsu, saying that he only knows the first form and doesn't know any of the other forms. But Zenitsu doesn't care about Spider Brother's mockery because his master once told him that even though Thunder Breathing has six different forms and Zenitsu only knows the first form, if he can perfect one form to its utmost, he would be an amazing swordsman. Spider Brother commands countless spiders to surround Zenitsu. Just when Spider Brother thinks he has the upper hand, Zenitsu suddenly remembers his past experience of wanting to give up being a demon slayer. Nobody had any expectations for him except for his trainer, who never gave up on him. Perhaps not wanting to disappoint his master, after a moment, a surge of electric light explodes the group of spiders, surprising Spider Brother. The air trembles as Zenitsu uses first form, thunderclap and flash, 
and amplifies the attack sixfold. He steps on the spider threads, leaps into the air, and under the moonlight, he swiftly cuts off Spider Brother's head. As Spider Brother's life comes to an end, he can't wrap his head around the fact that he's been defeated by Zenitsu, who he thought was way weaker than him. Zenitsu falls onto the nest built by the spiders, and the poison continues to corrode him. Soon, he will turn into a human-headed spider. Tears stream down his face. In his consciousness, his trainer tells him not to give up and to slow down the flow of toxins using breathing techniques. His little sparrow rushes out to seek help. On the other hand, after dealing with Spider Mother, Tanjiro and Inosuke spot Spider Sister. Inosuke quickly chases after her, but Spider Sister calls Spider Father for help and runs away. Tanjiro and Inosuke join forces to fight Spider Father, but his skin is super tough and their attacks don't seem to hurt him. Spider Father roars furiously, sending the two flying. As Tanjiro lands, Spider Father punches the rock beneath him, sending Tanjiro flying. Inosuke tries to attack from behind, but Spider Father sweats him away. Spider Father chases Inosuke into a river, where Tanjiro chops a tree down onto him. Tanjiro takes a deep breath, preparing to attack with his water-breathing, tenth form. However, Spider Father lifts the tree trunk from the water and sends him flying. Tanjiro tells Inosuke from the air to hang in there, he'll be right back, and that Spider Father might be one of the twelve Kazuki. As he lands, Tanjiro hears Spider Sister crying and finds Rei punishing her ruthlessly. Tanjiro interrupts, questioning their relationship. Rei claims that she is his older sister. They are family bonded by love. Tanjiro responds by saying he only smells fear and disgust between them. There's no love or trust. Their family bond is fake. This seems to hit Spider Sister hard and surprises Rei, who quickly becomes furious. Just then, a swordsman arrives. Thinking Rei is a weak demon, he attempts to kill him, but Rei easily slices him into pieces with his spider threads. Rei turns to Tanjiro, asking him to repeat what he just said. Tanjiro, unafraid, repeats that there's no love or trust between Rei and Spider Sister. Their family bond is fake. This angers Rei, who attacks Tanjiro with his threads, cutting his face. Tanjiro uses his sword to block the threads and jumps around to avoid Rei's attacks. He finds an opportunity to attack with his water breathing, first form. But to his surprise, Rei's thread cuts his sword in half. The thread slashes his face, and Tanjiro falls to the ground. Elsewhere, Inosuke fiercely attacks Spider Father. He leaps high into the air and slashes his sword into the demon's arm. Then he takes his other sword and strikes hard at the embedded blade. After a series of powerful blows, he finally cuts off one of the Spider Dad's arms. Seeing this, Spider Father turns and starts to run. Inosuke, feeling powerful and thrilled, chases after him closely. Meanwhile, two Hashira rank demon slayers, Giyu and Shinobu, arrive at the foot of the mountain and discover heavy casualties. They decide to split up. Shinobu finds Zenitsu, who is unconscious. She's an expert in poison and quickly administers an antidote to him, as well as to the other demon slayers who were captured by Spider Brother. Inosuke finds Spider Father, who he'd cut the arm off earlier. Spider Father is shedding his skin in a tree, and after molting, he becomes even bigger. Inosuke uses his beast breathing technique to strike Spider Father, but it doesn't affect the demon, and Inosuke's swords break. Inosuke is then knocked away heavily injured. Spider Father picks up Inosuke, who tries to stab him in the neck, but it doesn't hurt the demon at all. As the demon is about to crush Inosuke's head, Inosuke is on the brink of death and he suddenly remembers a kind woman holding him as a baby and told him to keep living no matter what. But Inosuke can't recall who this gentlewoman was. Just then, Giyu arrives at the scene and slices off the demon's arm with one swift stroke. He then uses his water breathing technique and easily beheads the demon. Inosuke is stunned he's never encountered someone so powerful before. He decides to challenge Giyu, believing that if he can defeat Giyu, he'll be strong enough to kill a 12 Kazuki. But Giyu tells Inosuke that Spider Father is not a 12 Kazuki, and ties Inosuke to a tree to keep the injured boy from moving. Now Spider Mother, Spider Dad, and Spider Brother have all been defeated. Only two members of the Spider family remain, Rei and Spider Sister. Who's the member of the 12 Kizuki? The fight between Tanjiro and Rei continues. Rei hurls a mass of sharp spider threads at Tanjiro, thinking that Tanjiro can't escape. But Nezuko unexpectedly steps in and blocks the attack. When Rei sees Nezuko still protecting her brother even after becoming a demon, he feels envy for their strong bond as siblings. Rei thinks sisters should protect brothers, but his spider sister didn't. So, he cuts her in pieces. 
Spider Sister begs Ray not to kill her, and he tells her to kill others on the mountain. She agrees and runs away into the woods with her head. Rui offers Tanjiro a deal. If he gives him Nezuko, Rui won't hurt Tanjiro and Nezuko will become his sister. But Tanjiro refuses, saying Nezuko is not something to be given away. She has her own feelings. Fear and control don't make a family. But Rui doesn't care and says he will just kill Tanjiro and take Nezuko anyway. Rui then reveals his eye marked with a number showing he is lower 5 of the 12 Kazuki. Rei uses his threads to pull Nezuko towards him. When she resists and scratches his cheek, he throws her into the air and ties her up with threads. His cheek quickly heals, and he says it looks like Nezuko needs some discipline so he'll let her bleed a bit. As he tightens the threads, blood begins to drip from Nezuko's limbs. Tanjiro watches in agony and rushes to attack Rei with his broken sword, but is sent flying by Rei's threads. Tanjiro tries to close in and cut Rei's neck, but Rei's neck is much tougher than his threads. Tanjiro, who can't even cut through the threads, stands no chance against Rei's neck and is sent flying again. Nezuko, seeing her brother hurt, struggles with anger. Rei tightens the threads once more, and Nezuko falls unconscious from blood loss. Angry, Tanjiro focuses his spirit, swings his broken sword, and uses water breathing, tenth form, constant flux. The rapidly flowing water turns into a dragon and bites at the threads. Tanjiro manages to cut the threads. Seeing this, Rei infuses his blood into the threads and uses his blood demon art, cutting thread cage. A scarlet web spreads across the sky and descends onto Tanjiro. Tanjiro knows he can't cut these even stronger threads, and the fear awakens his memories. Tanjiro remembers what his dad told him when he was little, to control your breathing and to become one with the fire god, also known as Hanakami. Tanjiro's dad used to dance in the snow every year. His mom told Tanjiro that their family's work is related to fire. So, his dad would perform a special dance called the Kagura dance each year to ask for blessings from the fire god, also known as Hinakami. Tanjiro, curious as to how his sickly father could dance for so long, was told that it was a special way of breathing that doesn't tire you out. His father also told Tanjiro never to forget their family's Hanafora earrings and the tradition of the Kagura dance. Inspired by the Kagura dance, Tanjiro changes his breathing technique from water breathing to a new form, Hanakami Kagura. His water dragon turns into a blaze of fire, breaking through Rei's spider web. To protect his sister, Tanjiro charges towards Rei, making Rei back up. He spots an opening thread and swings his sword for a final strike. Inside Nezuko's mind, her mom urges her to wake up quickly and save her brother. Suddenly, Nezuko's eyes pop open and she stretches out her hand. Drops of her blood land on the threads and start to glow. She uses her blood demon art, called Exploding Blood, to set the threads on fire. This burns away the threads blocking Tanjiro's way and allows his sword to reach Rei's neck. Rei's head is severed, flying into the air. Tanjiro and Nezuko both tumble to the ground. As Tanjiro crawls over to his sister, he smells a strong scent of blood. To his surprise, Rei is not defeated. It turns out that before Tanjiro could cut off Rei's neck, Rei had already used his threads to cut his own neck. Demons can only be killed when their heads are chopped off by Nikarin swords. So when Rei used his own threads to cut off his own head, he didn't die. Rei weaves his threads into a cage, planning to kill Tanjiro. Tanjiro is so worn out, he can't fight back. Suddenly, Giyu appears and with just a single swipe of his sword, he breaks the thread cage. Rei uses his most powerful blood demon art, but Giyu responds with water breathing, 11th form, dead calm. All the threads coming towards Giyu just break apart. Tanjiro watches in surprise, as he didn't know an eleventh form existed. Then Giyu's sword cuts through Rei's neck, finishing him off. Before dying, Rei remembers when he was human. He was always sick, and Muzan gave him blood to turn him into a demon. He started devouring people. His parents wanted to bear the sin with him. They decided to end his suffering and join him. But young Rei didn't understand and killed them. He then forced various demons to act as his family and established a spider family. Those who didn't want to play along were destroyed by him in the sun. Rui now understands his parents' feelings and wants to apologize to them. But knowing that he's killed so many people, he'll surely go to hell and won't see his parents again. Shaking, Rei approaches Tanjiro and his sister, longing for the warmth of their family love. Tanjiro senses Rei's sadness and places his hand on Rui. His touch provides the comfort of family warmth. With that, Rui, apologizing and regretting his actions, turns into ashes. His parents' spirits appear in his consciousness. They promise to accompany him wherever he goes, showing the real bond of family love. Giyu steps on Rei's remains, 
telling Tanjiro not to feel sorry for demons. Tanjiro agrees that killing demons is necessary, but he still wants to offer his care to those who realize their mistakes and express remorse. After all, these demons were once humans too, and are sad beings who can't control their emotions and bodies. Giyu looks at Nezuko and suddenly recognizes her and Tanjiro. It turns out that Giyu was the one who spared Nezuko and introduced Tanjiro to Sakanji to become a demon slayer two years ago. Elsewhere, Spider Sister meets Murata. She uses her spider threads to surround Murata and releases venom. Shinobu suddenly appears behind her and uses insect breathing, butterfly dance, caprice. Seeing a beautiful swarm of butterflies, Spider Sister touches one of them, starts bleeding heavily, and is poisoned to death. Shinobu, although unable to behead demons with her sword like other Hashiras, is an expert in poisoning, capable of killing demons with her poison. Murata is saved. After Shinobu meets up with Giyu, they argue about whether Nezuko should be killed or not. A Kasugai crow flies over and tells them to take Tenjiro and Nezuko back to the Demon Slayer headquarters. Here, Tanjiro meets nine of the highest-ranked swordsmen of the core, known as the Hashiras. Each Hashira is a master of a unique breathing style. Giyu is skilled in water breathing, so he's known as the Water Hashira. Shinobu is skilled in insect breathing, so she's the Insect Hashira. There are also others like the Flame Hashira and the Wind Hashira, etc. Everyone discusses what to do with Nezuko. At that moment, the leader of the Demon Slayer Corps, Kagaya, appears. Even though he is blind and seems sick, he is greatly respected by everyone for his charisma and leadership. Kagaya presents a letter from Sakanji, explaining Nezuko's changes and how she hasn't harmed humans in the past two years. Sakanji promises to take responsibility if Nezuko hurts someone. So Kagaya accepts Nezuko, but the Wind Hashira tries to tempt her with his blood. Nezuko remembers her kind mother and brother, and Sakanji's voice telling her that humans are her family. In the end, Nezuko resists the urge to drink the blood. Shinobu offers to take care of Tanjiro and Nezuko. Inosuke and Zenitsu are also at Shinobu's house, recovering from their injuries. They meet Kaneo, Shinobu's student, who is picked to be the next insect Hashira. She always smiles and seems very friendly, but she never talks. After recovering, they train together to keep their total concentration breathing going all the time. Shinobu shares her story with Tanjiro, revealing her older sister wanted humans and demons to live peacefully. Unfortunately, her sister was killed by one of the twelve Kazuki, causing Shinobu to hate demons deeply. She finds it hard to have the same compassion as her sister. However, witnessing Tanjiro and Nezuko peacefully coexisting makes her believe that her sister's dream can come true. Meanwhile, Muzan is furious because Roy was killed. The Twelve Kazuki, which is divided into two groups, the upper ranks and the lower ranks, now only have five members left in the lower ranks because of Rei's death. Muzan thinks the lower ranks are too weak, so he decides to eliminate them one by one. Only one demon named Enmu, who holds the position of lower rank one, is left. Before he's killed, Enmu praises Muzan's strength and says he's willing to die by his hand. He adds that he enjoyed hearing the other demon's last breaths. Muzan likes what Enmu says, so he decides to spare him. Then, Enmu is pierced by a giant spine from Muzan's arm. Enmu is injected with a large amount of Muzan's blood and falls to the floor in agony. Muzan tells him that if he survives, he will become stronger. He orders Enmu to kill Tanjiro. Tanjiro and his friends receive a new mission to investigate the mysterious deaths on the Mugen train. They are equipped with new swords made by Haganazuka. Before leaving, Tanjiro thanks Kaneo. Kaneo, who rarely talks, takes out a coin, flips it, checks which side it lands on, and says goodbye to Tanjiro. Tanjiro is really surprised because Kaneo starts to talk. Kaneo explains that the coin told her to speak up, explaining how it helps her when she can't decide. She reveals that growing up in a poor and abusive family made her emotionally numb. Even when sold to a human trafficker, she didn't cry. One day, Shinobu and her sister rescued Kaneo and recognized her lack of independent thinking, giving her the coin as a tool to make choices when she felt unable to. Tanjiro questions why Kaneo can't decide for herself. Kaneo says nothing matters to her, making decision-making difficult. Tanjiro believes there must be something important to her and asks for the coin. He flips the coin and decides that if it lands on heads, Kaneo should start listening to her heart. In the end, the coin really does land on heads. Kaneo, touched by Tanjiro's kindness, clutches her coin close to her. She feels something stir in her heart. Maybe she can start to make her own decisions from now on. 
The trio pass a test by blowing up big gourds. This shows they've mastered the skill of total concentration constant. They are going to the Mugen train to hunt more demons. On the other hand, Rengoku, a demon slayer, is having a meal at a small restaurant. The owner mentions over 40 people have recently disappeared from the Mugen train. Rengoku thinks there might be a demon on the train, so he goes to the train station to investigate. But the old grandma and little girl selling lunch boxes there don't know anything about it. To help them out, Rengoku buys all of their lunch boxes before leaving. Rengoku hears that the Mugen train is now at a train repair yard. So he decides to go take a look. Suddenly, he hears screams from the yard. He rushes over and finds a demon with tattoos holding a boy. The demon's sharp claws are embedded into the boy's body, and the boy starts to bleed. Suddenly, the tattoos on the demon change color, glowing a bright blue. The demon darts around Rengoku at such high speed that it becomes a blur, with only streaks of blue light visible. This speed is the result of the demon's blood demon art, enabling him to cover large distances in an instant. Mockingly, the demon threatens Rango could not to attack or the boy will get hurt. As the demon digs its claws deeper into the boy, Rengoku reacts swiftly, slicing off the demon's arms. The demon yelps in surprise and escapes in a blur. Rengoku quickly tends to the boy's wounds, hands him over to the demon's Slayer Core support team, and starts his pursuit of the demon. He transforms into a whirl of flames, propelling himself kilometers away. The demon has entered the train station and targeted the girl selling lunchboxes. Frozen in fear, the girl doesn't know what to do until a lunchbox hurdles towards the demon's head. The girl's grandmother has thrown the lunchbox as a distraction, urging the girl to run away. The girl jumps off the platform to go get help but the demon catches up with her and pins her to the ground. Just as the girl is about to run out of breath, a whirl of flames rushes towards them. The demon quickly teleports away, but not before Rengoku severs its ankle, preventing it from escaping. He rescues the girl and, with his flame-breathing first form, unknowing fire, decapitates the demon. The grandmother watches this scene with tears streaming down her face. It turns out that 20 years ago, she was saved by Rengoku's father in a similar way. She recognizes Rengoku's movements, which are just like his father's. After calming the two victims, Rengoku finds out that the Mugen train is leaving tomorrow night, and that there will be members of the Demon Slayer Corps on board. Rengoku is a Hashira, the highest rank in the Demon Slayer Corps, and is known as the Flame Hashira due to his expertise in flame breathing. Tanjiro and his friends also moved up a few ranks due to their previous experiences. On the following night, the four successfully meet up on the Mugen train. Rengoku warns everyone there might be demons on the train, so they all need to be on high alert. Zenitsu is so scared that his hair stands on end. Why are there demons everywhere? Suddenly, the lights flicker and Rengoku senses the demon's arrival, and Tanjiro smells a foul odor. With his sword at the ready, Rengoku positions himself in front of everyone, protecting them. The lights go out, and in the next moment, a huge demon with a split face covered in horns appears before them. As the demon lunges, Rengoku uses his flame-breathing first form, unknowing fire, and with a blade of flame, easily decapitates the demon. Everyone is amazed at how Rengoku took down the demon with just one move. He then rushes to the front of the train, where another demon with super long arms and four scary eyes on its face prepares to feast on a passenger. Zenitsu hides behind a seat, terrified by the number of demons on the train. Inosuke charges at the demon but gets thrown off by a long arm that the demon shoots out. Rengoku catches Inosuke and brings him to safety. He then saves the passenger, urging him to go to the back of the train. Enraged, the demon charges at Rengoku, attacking with its sharp claws. Rengoku uses his flame-breathing second form rising scorching Sunday. He swings his blade from below, spiraling into a blazing wheel of fire, and decapitates the demon. Tanjiro and his friends are so impressed by Rengoku's ability that they ask him to take them as his apprentices, and even start calling him Big Brother, and the gracious Big Brother is willing to take them all in. Suddenly, a wave of sleepiness washes over them and they fall asleep instantly. Standing on the roof of the train is Enyu, a demon affiliated with the Twelve Kazuki, holding the position of lower rank one. He starts to use his blood demon art. This power allows him to trap people in their dreams and make them see what they desire most. At this moment, everyone is dreaming about things they long for. Zenitsu is playing in the mountains, carrying Nezuko on his back. 
In Inosuke's dream, everyone obeys his orders like loyal followers as he leads them on an adventure through a cave. In Rengoku's dream, he sees his father and excitedly tells him about becoming a Hashira, only to receive a cold response. His father was not always like this, he was once the passionate former flame Hashira. His mother's death, however, changed his father. Despite this, Rengoku remains positive, encouraging his younger brother Senjuro to find his own path in life. Tanjiro's dream is a reunion with his family. Next, four human children appear on the train. They want Ennu to send them into happy dreams so they willingly become helpers for Ennu. Ennu instructs each of them to connect their wrists to a demon slayer using a special rope, allowing them to enter the slayer's dream and perform their assigned tasks. In the dreams Enmu creates, the dreamer is in a circular dream space, and outside the circle is the dreamer's subconscious that holds the dreamer's spiritual core. If the core is destroyed, the dreamer becomes a lifeless shell. Enmu assigns each of the four kids to destroy the spiritual core of each dreamer. Enmu doesn't do it himself because his demon aura might wake the demon slayers up. Soon, the girl in Rengoku's dream finds the dream's border and cuts open it, revealing Rengoku's subconscious realm filled with roaring flames. In the depths, a floating fireball is Rengoku's spiritual core. The girl quickly runs towards it, preparing to destroy it. Maybe due to survival instincts, the sleeping Rengoku in the real world reacts and automatically grabs the girl's throat, freezing her in place. Because of this, she can't move in his dream as well. Meanwhile, Tanjiro is fetching water in his dream when suddenly, his reflection appears in the water. Before he knows it, the reflection pulls him underwater, tugging at his clothes and shouting, Wake up! This is a dream, not reality! But in the next moment, he's transported back home, watching his younger siblings bicker. He's torn. Is this really a dream? Back in the real world, Nezuko crawls out of the box, big-eyed and full of questions. Seeing her brother trapped in a dream, she tries to wake him up but to no avail. In frustration, she hits Tanjiro's forehead with her head. Not only does it not work, but she ends up bleeding, tears rolling down her face. So, she uses her blood demon art, combustible blood. Nezuko's blood turns into pink-colored flames and enters Tanjiro's dream. Recognizing the scent of Nezuko's blood, Tanjiro's demon slayer uniform and his Nikarin sword appear. Tanjiro finally realizes that he's trapped in a dream set up by a demon. He pushes open the door and runs off to find a way to break the dream. Suddenly, someone calls him. Brother, a voice so familiar. Tears well up in his eyes as he turns to see his sister Nezuko, human once again. His mother and other siblings rush over, asking where he's going. With the faces he misses day and night, and the gentle calls of his family, he wishes to stay in this dream forever. But he knows he has friends in the real world, and he can't go back to the way things were. So, he runs off, fighting back tears. At this point, a boy who has infiltrated Tanjiro's dream pierces the boundary of the dream and enters Tanjiro's subconscious realm. The surroundings are peaceful, warm, and quiet. The representations of Tanjiro's soul guide him to his spiritual core. The boy is moved by Tanjiro's longing for his family, and he drops to his knees, unable to destroy the core. While all this is happening, Tanjiro is still trying to figure out how to break the dream. Suddenly, a blizzard kicks up, and his father appears, telling him that what he needs to cut is right in front of him. Before he can react, his father disappears with the blizzard. Tanjiro seems to understand. He places the blade on his neck, and with a hard push, Tanjiro in the real world wakes up. The way to break the dream is to kill his dream self. On the other hand, Inosuke has caught the servant of Enmu who has infiltrated his dream and is chasing her down. Zenitsu, too, finds an intruder in his dream and confronts him, claiming that his world belongs only to Nezuko. He uses the thunder breathing technique to chase the boy away. Tanjiro discovers the rope on his hand is severed by Nezuko's blood demon art. He then notices three other children connected to his comrades by ropes. Tanjiro asks Nezuko to burn the remaining ropes. The human children wake up and attack Tanjiro, blaming him for their failed mission. Enmu won't let them dream beautiful dreams anymore. Tanjiro knocks the three children unconscious. The boy who entered Tanjiro's dream has tears in his eyes. He is seriously ill and is constantly in pain. If he destroys Tanjiro's spiritual core, Enmu will allow him to dream happy dreams. But the pure, kind world inside Tanjiro moved the boy, making him reluctant to build his happiness on someone else's pain. Hearing this, 
Tanjiro is furious. This demon is despicable, exploiting human weaknesses and causing humans to turn against each other. He goes to the top of the train and finds Enmu. Enmu immediately uses his blood demon art against Tanjiro, trying to trap him in a dream again. However, every time he falls asleep, Tanjiro quickly awakens every single time after taking his life in his slumber. Enmu is surprised to see how determined Tanjiro is. Soon, he traps Tanjiro in a terrifying nightmare where his family scorns him, questioning why he couldn't save them and ridiculing his incompetence. Fortunately, Tanjiro doesn't fall for this trick. He knows his family would never say such cruel things. He roars back boldly. There's no way my family'd ever say that. He then uses water breathing 10th form, constant flux, and successfully chops off Enmu's head. But surprisingly, Enmu doesn't die. Instead, a terrifying body sprouts from his head. Tanjiro is dumbfounded as Enmu chuckles, revealing that he had became one with the train while they were sleeping. His previous body was just a false cover. The train is now Enmu, and Enmu is the train. The 200 passengers on board the train are now potential food for Enmu. Enmu's body merges into the train car, preparing to feast on the sleeping humans. Spotting this, a horrified Tanjiro calls out for help. Suddenly, a person breaks through the top of the train and flies into the sky. It's Inosuke, who has just awoken from his dream. Together, they begin to protect the sleeping passengers, madly severing Enmu's tentacles. But Enmu's regenerative ability is strong. Nezuko is captured by Enmu's tentacles, falling into danger. In the nick of time, her biggest fan Zenitsu uses thunder breathing first form, thunderclap and flash, cutting through Enmu's tentacles, saving Nezuko. Ashamed he had been sleeping, Rengo leaps into action, setting the train ablaze with Enmu's body parts. There are eight train cars, and he tells Tanjiro he'll protect the passengers in five of them. Zenitsu and Nezuko will protect the remaining three, while Tanjiro and Inosuke are tasked with finding and severing the demon's neck. Using Beast Breathing 7th Form, Spatial Awareness, Inosuke determines the demon's neck is likely in the driver's compartment. But when he gets there, he's trapped by countless hands from Enyu, unable to escape. Thankfully, Tanjiro arrives in time, cutting off these arms. Guided by his sharp sense of smell, Tanjiro confirms the location of the neck is underground. Inosuke uses his Beast Breathing technique to break open the floor, revealing Enmu's neck bone. Just as Tanjiro is about to cut the neck bone with his sword, Enmu's rotting flesh surprisingly blocks the attack. Suddenly, countless tentacles shoot out from the ground. Tanjiro, quickly picking up the train driver, dashes to the top of the train. The rotten flesh morphs into a bowl-like shape and protects the demon's neck. Tanjiro and Inosuke plan to work together, one chopping at the flesh while the other aims for the demon's neck. Suddenly, countless eyes emerge from the flesh. Anybody who gazes at these eyes gets trapped in a dream. Tanjiro has to repeatedly slash his neck to snap back into reality. He jumps back into the driver's cabin. Every single demonic eye in the room is focused on him. The moment his feet hit the floor, he's pulled back into the dream world. This cycle repeats over and over, each time waking up to the stare of the demon's eyes and then plunging back into the dream world. He gets confused between reality and the dream, and nearly swings his sword in the real world. At the crucial moment, Inosuke holds his hand and reminds him that they are in the real world. Inosuke wears a boar mask so the demon eyes can't hypnotize him. Inosuke proceeds to cut all the demon's eyes. Suddenly, the train driver rushes down, trying to attack Inosuke with a blade. Tanjiro rushes over and takes the lethal blow for him, bleeding heavily from his stomach. It turns out the driver had willingly become Enmu's minion, lured by the promise of beautiful dreams. Tanjiro knows that the driver is just temporarily confused by his desires. He knocks out the driver and drags him to a safe place. The rotten flesh then begins to swell and morph, becoming several meters tall and trapping the duo. Countless demon hands attack them, forcing them to retreat to the top of the train. As the flesh continues to expand, it throws them up into the air. Waving their swords, they cut through the demon hands, making their way down towards Enmu's neck. However, a multitude of demonic eyes appear, posing a fatal threat if Tanjiro falls asleep. Luckily, Inosuke, who remains unaffected, quickly dispatches these eyes, leading the way downwards with Tanjiro. Using his beast breathing fourth fawn, slice and dice technique, Inosuke carves through the demon's flesh, exposing its neck bone. Tanjiro, with his sword raised, plummets downwards and unleashes his special move, Hanakami Kagura. His blade turns into a blaze, releasing a will-like slash that successfully severs the demon's neck. Enmu's head separates from his body, and the rotten flesh covering the train rapidly turns to ashes. The train derails, 
and Tanjiro tumbles down, rolling several times before coming to a stop. Inosuke rushes to help him. His injury from the stab he took for Inosuke is severe, and the exhaustion from using Hinakami Kagura makes it hard for him even to stand. Despite this, he's still concerned for the driver who stabbed him, urging Inosuke to save him. At Tanjiro's request, Inosuke leaves to save the train driver. Enmu completely turns to Ash, leaving behind an eye marked lower rank one. Rengoku comes over, advising Tanjiro to focus on his breathing to stop the bleeding. Following his advice, Tanjiro manages to stop the blood, deepening his admiration for Rengoku. Just then, they sense a demonic presence. A tattoo-covered demon squats before them. Tanjiro's face turns pale in shock. The demon's eyes bear the mark upper rank 3. He is a Kaza from the 12 Kazuki, holding the third highest position. He was sent by Muzan. In a flash, a Kaza appears before Tanjiro, raising his fist to strike him. But our big brother Rengoku is quick. He pulls out his sword and uses flame breathing second form, rising scorching Sun. It creates a red-hot arc of fire that slices Akaza's arm in half. But then his arm heals up almost instantly. Through his special demon eyes, Akaza can see that Rengoku's fighting spirit is super strong. He figures that Rengoku must be a Hashira. So he offers Rengoku a deal to become a demon, promising he can fight forever because demons don't die like humans. But Rengoku refuses. He says that it's the fact that we live and then we pass away that makes life precious. He would never ever join the demons, no matter what. They clearly can't agree, and a huge battle is about to begin. Akaza uses blood demon art destructive death compass needle. Akaza manifests a light blue snowflake shaped compass underneath him. This technique not only shows Akaza how strong his opponent is, but also gives him a big boost in strength and speed. Suddenly, Akaza dashes forward and starts fighting with Rengoku. The fight is so fast and fierce that Tanjiro, who's hurt, can't even see what's happening. All he sees are two streaks of light fighting in a cloud of dust. Akaza throws a flurry of punches, but Rengoku blocks them all with his sword. Then, he cuts into Akaza's wrist with a strong slash. Despite the fight, Akaza still tries to convince Rengoku to become a demon. Rengoku remains unmoved. Angry, Akaza throws another punch, but Rengoku cuts off his arm again, but his arm grows back in no time. Akaza then punches hard, but Rengoku manages to block it with his sword. The force of the punch is so strong it vibrates his entire sword. Suddenly, Akaza throws another punch with his left fist, hitting Rengoku hard. But Rengoku, even though he's in a lot of pain, swings his sword and pushes Akaza back. Akaza floats midair and uses his blood demon art, destructive death, air type. He punches the air so hard that it sends a powerful shockwave flying straight straight towards Rengoku. Rengoku's entire body shakes from the hit. Meanwhile, Akaza is going wild, throwing punches in midair with manic intensity. With no time to waste, Rengoku retaliates with his fourth form, blooming flame undulation. He swings his blade in a sweeping circular motion, creating a swirl of fiery flames all around him, protecting him like a shield. Akaza's attacks can't get through, so he has no choice but to land back on the ground. Rengoku knows that the only way to defeat Akaza is to get close and cut off his head. Even though it's really dangerous, it's the only way to win. He braces himself, closes the distance, and quickly swings his sword at Akaza. But Akaza dodges perfectly. They are locked in a fiery clash once again. Akaza gets cut, and demon blood splatters everywhere. But even while he's hurt, he keeps trying to convince Rengoku to turn into a demon. He tells Rengoku that humans grow old and weak and then die, and that his amazing sword skills would be lost. Meanwhile, Inosuke rushes over, wanting to help Rengoku. But Rengoku shouts at them. He tells them that they're too injured and if they fight again, they could die. Inosuke and Tanjiro have no choice but to watch helplessly. Akaza intentionally moves back to make Rengoku chase him and tire himself out. Rengoku charges at Akaza, sending him flying into the forest with a single sword strike. Rengoku chases him into the forest. Suddenly, Akaza teleports right in front of Rengoku. Rengoku slashes his arm, but Akaza quickly counters by kicking Rengoku away. Tanjiro and Inosuke are really worried for Rengoku now. Rengoku crouches on the ground, panting heavily. His breath is ragged, and his body is trembling. Akaza walks over to him and compliments Rengoku, saying that if he were to turn into a demon, they could fight and improve together. As soon as Akaza's done speaking, he grows a new arm. Rengoku rejects Akaza again, firmly repeating that he will never turn into a demon. He gets up and charges at Akaza, using his third form, Blazing Universe. He swings his sword in a big arc. Even after Akaza gets cut, in less than a second, his wounds heal. Akaza uses his blood demon art again, destructive death, air type, and lands a punch straight on Rengoku. Rengoku is pushed back, 
but he doesn't let the pain stop him. In the blink of an eye, he's back attacking Akaza. Tanjiro and Inosuke can only watch helplessly from the sidelines. They understand that both fighters are really strong and if they tried to help, they just get in Rengoku's way. So they just watch. Akaza throws a punch so hard that it breaks the ground. Then he charges at Rengoku. Rengoku retaliates, cutting into Akaza's arm with his sword. Akaza yells at Rengoku, asking him if he wants to die and why he won't turn into a demon. But Rengoku is resolute, refusing to give in to the demons. Akaza punches again, grazing Rengoku's eyebrow and drawing blood. Rengoku uses his first form, unknowing fire cutting off Akaza's arms. But it doesn't matter because Akaza's wounds heal super fast. He throws more punches at Rengoku, who's quickly running out of energy and can only try to block with his sword. Catching Rengoku off guard, Akaza lands a punch in Rengoku's belly. Rengoku is badly hurt, but he fights back, using the move Rising Scorching Sun. Even though it creates a burst of flames, Akaza dodges it perfectly. Akaza swings another punch and Rengoku tries to block it with his sword, but he's exhausted. Akaza lands a punch in Rengoku's left eye, causing him severe pain. Despite being half-blinded, Rengoku doesn't back down. He gives his all, using the flame-breathing fifth form, Flame Tiger, which looks like a tiger made of flames attacking Akaza. At the same time, Akaza uses his move, Destructive Death Disorder, releasing a destructive wave of energy. Their powerful moves clash, and the fight seems evenly matched. After their clash, Rengoku is covered in wounds, blinded in one eye, and his body is shaking from exhaustion. In contrast, Akaza Akaza is barely injured. Tanjiro is really worried about Rengoku. He can tell that things are not going well. Kaza tries again to persuade Rengoku to turn into a demon, telling him that humans are weak and it's pointless to fight to the death. If Rengoku were a demon, his injuries would heal in the blink of an eye. But Rengoku's fighting spirit cannot be swayed by Akaza. He decides to stake his life on the fight and pushes his power to the limit. Akaza looks through his demon eyes and sees Rengoku's fighting spirit burning like a flame. Akaza is taken aback by this. Rengoku picks up his sword. Through his breath, he makes his heart blaze like a roaring fire. Every vein in his body fills with burning flames, making him as powerful as he can possibly be. Akaza is totally shocked. The pressure from Rengoku's fiery power is just too strong. Rengoku uses the ninth form, Rengoku, the most powerful flame-breathing technique. He becomes surrounded by a flame, instantly transforming into a molten fire dragon, and dashes towards Akaza with the speed of light. Akaza uses destructive death, annihilation type. They clash head-on, causing an enormous explosion that shakes the earth and sends dust flying into the sky. In the molten river of flames, Rengoku swings his sword. The first strike slashes Akaza's arm, the second slices through his body. His blade bursts into flames and pierces through Akaza's body. Then Rengoku aims for Akaza's head. His incredible strength causes a swirling tornado of flames. Tanjiro and Inosuke can only watch in awe. When the firestorm subsides, Tanjiro is shocked to see Rengoku has been pierced through by one of Akaza's punches. Akaza is also badly burned, but his wounds quickly heal. He urges Rengoku to become a demon, otherwise he will die. Why would he want to remain human? Rengoku is in a daze. He remembers when he was a child at home. His mother once told him that a person with extraordinary talents must use their power to help those who are weak and in need. It's the duty of those born strong to protect those who are not. Rengoku is determined to fulfill his mother's expectations. With his last bit of strength, he slashes at Akaza's neck with his sword. But he doesn't have enough strength to decapitate him. Just then, Akaza Akaza launches a fierce attack, aiming for Rengoku's right eye. In the nick of time, Rengoku blocks with his left hand, controlling Akaza. The sun starts to rise and Akaza is terrified. He wants to escape, but Rengoku has him firmly in his grasp. Rengoku is determined to die together with him. At this critical moment, Tanjiro rushes over. He must cut off Akaza's head before Rengoku sacrifices himself. The sky is already bright, and Akaza is increasingly anxious, but he can't break free from Rengoku's grip. With all his might, Rengoku drives his sword deeper into Akaza. Inosuke rushes to aid them. He leaps into the air, speeding towards Akaza with his sword aimed for the demon's head. He's just a meter away from Akaza when Akaza abruptly cuts off both his arms. He uses a blast of wind to blow Inosuke away, and ignoring the blade stuck in his neck, 
He dives back to the ground and runs into the forest. Tanjiro chases after him, throwing his sword that accurately pierces through Akaza. Akaza is furious, but he has no choice but to escape. Tanjiro yells at him, calling him a coward and challenging him to stop running. Akaza, infuriated by Tanjiro's words, makes a mental note to settle scores with him someday. Tanjiro cries his heart out. He yells out that Rengoku is far better than Akaza. Rengoku didn't lose. He fought till the end and protected everyone on the train. Rengoku, gravely injured, kneels on the ground. Before dying, he calls Tanjiro to his side. He knows Tanjiro wants to know more about the Hinakami Kagura. Rengoku tells him that back at his family home, there's a diary of the flame Hashira which might have information on the Hinakami Kagura. He also asks Tanjiro to visit his younger brother and father on his behalf, asking his brother to follow his heart in choosing his path in life, and for his father to take care of his health. Lastly, he acknowledges Nezuko, stating his belief that she can become a member of the Demon Slayer Corps. Just like he has faith that Tanjiro and his friends will become the pillars of the future, he tells Tanjiro, Go ahead and live with your head held high. No matter how devastated you may be by your own weakness or uselessness, set your heart ablaze. As he's about to pass away, Rengoku sees his mother looking at him. She has a smile on her face and tells him how bravely he fought. With a smile, Rengoku breathes his last breath. It's only then that Zenitsu arrives. He sees big brother Rengoku who fought till the end, and tears instantly start to fall from his eyes. Inosuke is also really upset, so much so that his boar's head mask fills up with tears. All three of them are incredibly sad. Rengoku's Kasugai crow, crying, sends the news of his death everywhere. When the leader of the Demon Slayer Corps, Kagaya, hears about his death, he praises Rengoku for being excellent. The sound Hashira called Tenjin, who's investigating in the Entertainment District arc, also receives the news about Rengoku's death. He can't help but feel surprised that there's a demon out there that even a flame Hashira couldn't defeat. The name of this anime is Demon Slayer. And next, we'll tell the story of what happens in the Entertainment District arc. Remember to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss it.